Raider Nation, what's going on? You guys are watching the Raiders Report. Remember, this was filmed on Tuesday during our live show when we go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Let's go to a super chat coming in from Anthony Morales. What up, my dude? Sean Payton of the Raiders offense would be better. Yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah, I mean, if you go go out and figure out a way to get Sean Payton, for those of you that don't know, Sean Payton, he is stepping away from the New Orleans Saints, but he also has three years left on his deal, okay? So if the Raiders wanted to go out and get him, they'd have to trade for him. The most recent trade that I think of is when the Raiders traded uh, traded away John Gruden, which they basically gave up. It was like two first-round picks, I believe two second-round picks at the time, and $8 million in cash. You still have to make some kind of big-time payday or some big-time trade. I don't see that happening, but I did talk about this last week on the Raiders report, and I said, hey, we were told by a source that Sean Payton would consider going to the Raiders. Personally, I think it's going to be the Dallas Cowboys, but for those of you that don't think that we have sources, for those of you that don't know, Sean Payton's daughter works here at Chat Sports. Let's go to the next question, and then it's from... James Gomez, is there any stock in the Raiders having lost to the Super Bowl champs if the Bengals win at all? Does it influence our coach hiring? No, I don't think it does influence the coach hiring at all. I think, honestly, if you're going to influence coach hiring whatsoever, it would be, if does that coach think that Derek Carr is to the caliber of somebody like Joe Burrow, uh, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes? Because I would sit here and say no. D.C. isn't on that level, and it's, you know, obviously unfair, but if that head coach watched that Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes game and he's like, that's somebody that I want, then that might influence your head coaching hire, which then influences the quarterback. Let's go to mini 457. Let's say the Raiders are keeping Carr and he wants Adams, but the Packers franchise tag him. Would you trade your first, fifth, and Brian Edwards for Adams? So, Sam... If you could quickly make that up for me real quick, I would appreciate that. So I, I actually think if you were to ask me, do I think the Raiders keep Carr? My gut feeling is, yes, the Raiders are more than likely going to stick with D.C. And sure, there is a possibility that they could franchise tag him. So basically the trade idea that you're cooking up is this. The Raiders get Devontae Adams. The Packers get Brian Edwards, a 2022 first round pick, which is 22nd overall. And then a fifth round pick. So the Raiders have two fifth round picks for this purpose. I'm going to say it's the Raiders' first fifth round pick, which I think is like 149 or 150. Uh, either way, they drafted Brian Edwards in the third round. I was very disappointed from what I saw from Edwards this year. I would make this trade in a heartbeat, but if I was Green Bay, I would want more because Brian Edwards to me is probably worth a fifth, maybe a sixth round pick, probably a sixth round pick. So a first, a fifth, and a sixth for Devontae Adams. I would sit here and say no, but if I was the Raiders, yes, absolutely, I would make this deal. Now the Super Bowl is going to be coming up before you even know it, and I want to know down in the comments who you all think is going to win the Super Bowl. I want you to type KC for the Kansas City Chiefs, SF for the San Francisco 49ers, CIN for the Cincinnati Bengals, LAR for the Los Angeles Rams, and if anybody wants to bet on the Super Bowl, remember you can always go to chatsports.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. You always go to chatsports.com slash Raiders promo code Raiders125. That's going to get you 125% deposit bonus. Let's go to a super chat coming in from Garen Edwards. I good with Jim or Rich, but I definitely don't want McDaniels because he was hired as a Colts head coach and immediately withdrew and went back to the Pats. You know, I'm amazed on the amount of people that forget about this, and I'll kind of talk about it if you're watching this live during my head coach Canada thing, but you're right. Josh McDaniels was literally hired to be the head coach of Indianapolis, and he hired a staff. I mean, Matt Eberflus was part of the staff that McDaniels hired, and then once a whole bunch of these coordinators, once everyone moved their families to Indy, Josh McDaniels pulls out at the last minute and was like, nah, I'm going to stick with New England. How could you, as a Las Vegas Raiders organization, tell your players to believe in a guy that literally gave up on tons of people and families? That's why I do not want Josh McDaniels anywhere near the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's go to Nate. Do you see the Raiders drafting a rookie quarterback? Personally, no. The only way I see the Raiders drafting a rookie quarterback is it totally depends on what the deal is for Carr. If they decide not to extend Carr, then I could understand the idea of going out and getting a rookie quarterback. It also depends who the next head coach is going to be. If it's Brian Dable, which personally I think Brian Dable is going to be the next head coach of the 
of the New York Giants I don't, or maybe even the Miami Dolphins. I don't see him going to Las Vegas, but as it stands right now, I will say no. I do not see Las Vegas drafting a rookie quarterback, but, you know, I mean, hey, the Raiders went to the playoffs. They're a lot closer to making a Super Bowl run than being in a rebuild. Let's go to Mr. Shelby. Can the Raiders release Greg Olson? I know Greg Olson has... He still is the head or the offensive coordinator of Las Vegas. A lot of a lot of fake reports that came out a few weeks ago about this, but they will. I mean, Greg Olson's not going to be the off OC for Las Vegas. I can promise you that. And if he is, then you know we're going to have to bark up some crazy trees. First, I think the only way that Olson has even a chance is if they keep Basaccia. Derek Carr vouches for him, but if DC vouches for Greg Olson, I I, I wouldn't surprise me if Carr does because he's a good guy. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you watch Greg Olson and you're like, yeah, that's the guy that I want, then I question Derek Carr. I would question Rich Passaccia, and I would question what the hell the Raiders are doing. Now, to make sure you guys never miss anything going on around the silver and black, go ahead and hit that sub button. We got close to 1,400 people watching this live video, and we are your one-stop shop. There was no other YouTube channel that does what we do around Raiders content. News, rumors, draft, free agency, trades. We're keeping you guys up to date the entire offseason. There's a reason why we have over 106,000 subscribers. It's because we interact with the nation like Untouchable Raider, Daniel Kean, Matt Reyes, but we also keep you guys up to date. So it's 100% free to subscribe. Last time I checked, that's a pretty damn good deal. It's youtube.com slash Raidersport. Spread the word. More subs we get, more videos and content we can create. Let's go to Mr. Banks. All right. Saints need to get rid of Cap. Should we try to go out and get Michael Thomas? I mean, right now the Saints are going to be somewhere probably around, I don't know, they're like $74 million in the hole. So, sure, Michael Thomas might be an option, but I like Thomas a lot. But why would I go out and trade probably a first-round pick and have to pay Thomas all the money that he's making when I at least have an opportunity to not give up any draft capital to go out and get Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin? The other thing with Michael Thomas is he's really kind of turned into a bit of a drama queen. He hasn't played in almost 18 months, so with the amount of talented players that there are in free agency, I would say that I would rather go out and sign one of them. Now, if New Orleans is like, hey, We'll give you Michael Thomas for a third-round pick. Sure, then, then I'm a lot more open to the idea. Could a Shane Gamble, out of the wide receivers in the draft that could fall to the Raiders, which one is closest to Henry Ruggs, speed and talent-wise? Well, I don't know if you're going to find a receiver that's going to run a 4.27. I don't know if there's going to be somebody with that type of electric speed. The name that I would have said reminded me of him was Jamison Williams because he was a speedster. He could run. Garrett Wilson's probably a better route runner. Chris Olave is fast, but he's more of a overall terms of a player, I guess, in being able to create space. The closest guy to Henry Ruggs is probably Jihad Dotson. He's not nearly the athlete that Ruggs is, but I guess from your question standpoint, I'll say Dotson, but I wouldn't take him at number 22 overall. Let's go to David Taken. Should the Raiders trade for DK Metcalf? Holy shit. That's a hell of a question. Should they? If you get DK Metcalf, yes, but you're going to give up a first-round pick. Like, I love DK, but, uh, again, there's a lot of really talented players in free agency, and if you go out and do that, I don't know if you're, then you're going to go out and get Devontae Adams. I'll take Devontae Adams over DK Metcalf every single day of the week, and if you want to go out and draft potentially the next DK Metcalf, his name is Drake London. That's my comp for Drake London is DK Metcalf. Now, if anybody wants to bet on the Super Bowl, AFC Championship game, NFC Championship game, I don't know where Aaron Rodgers is going to go. Who the next Raiders head coach is going to be. You can actually do it at chatsports.com slash Raiders. Promo code. Yeah, you guessed it. Raiders 125 is going to get you 125% deposit bonus to explain to you how good of a deal this is. I've been going with, imagine buying a pizza. You get a free pizza, and then they give you an extra two, to or two slices 100% free. That's the deal we got going on. It's chatsports.com slash Raiders. All right, next question coming in here on the Raiders board is from Sky. In your opinion, I give my opinion a lot, what wide receiver should we really invest in for this offseason and what our biggest need to focus on? I mean, your biggest need, your biggest focus is still on Derek Carr, right? Like, you still need to be able to figure out if DC is your future. Like, are you going to extend him? Because if you decide to extend him, then you're going to put a lot of other pieces around him. If you decide to move on from him, then obviously that changes a lot. So, like, the biggest focus is still probably DC, and that's after getting a head coach, after getting a GM. But let's say we keep Derek Carr. 
I think it's protecting him. you got to find a right tackle that you can actually count on, which is then going to help your last year's first-round pick in Alex Leatherwood, which is then going to help Andre James, who you extended. Then you got to find a left guard who potentially could be Denzel Good. you got Colt Miller, who you extended for a long time. you got to extend Max Crosby. you got to extend Hunter Renfro. A lot, a lot of stuff should happen. So we're going to be breaking down a lot of this content the entire offseason. But, yeah, if you keep guard, then you also got to get him a wide receiver one. Let's go to Duh. Win from NZ, or maybe Don, I don't know. Uh, do you really think Lamar Jackson is a better quarterback than Derek Carr? Yes, I do, and that's not a rip on DC. It's just Lamar, his ability, it just gives you a lot more versatility. Now, sure, the Raiders and Carr, they beat Lamar Jackson at the beginning of the year, but before Jackson got hurt, the Ravens were the number one seed in the AFC. His ability to be able to run is just unlike anything I've ever seen. I think he's the greatest athlete at the quarterback position in the National Football League like that I've ever personally seen. But I like Carr. He's just not a top 10 quarterback. Lamar Jackson is, in my opinion. So who do y'all think is the better QB? Type 4 for Derek Carr or 8 for Lamar Jackson? I'm going to type 8 today, tomorrow, and probably twice on Sunday. I get it. Lamar had his struggles this year, but Lamar also lost some offensive linemen. He lost his top three running backs, and he ended up getting hurt. Derek also struggled a lot because he lost a lot of pieces as well. But uh, if I'm going to go with a quarterback, I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson. Let's go to Mondo 760. 30 million for Carr and 27 mil for Adams. That's roughly 57 mil on two players. Now sign Crosby, Renfro, Waller, Sheesh, who walks, most likely Waller. Out of all those that you just mentioned, yes, you're right. Waller probably would be the more likely one. From people that I have talked to, Crosby's going to get his extension. Hunter Renfro's going to get his extension. And this also piggybacks on the idea of why I do not want to extend Derek Carr. You keep DC on his $19.9 million deal this year. You go out and get a top receiver like Adams, who, yes, yeah, probably going to be about $25, $27 million a year. You extend Max Crosby. You extend Hunter Renfro. And then instead of giving Derek Carr that, I don't know, $11, 12000000 million extra that you would have given him, yeah, you invest that into other people like Darren Waller. I also want the Raiders to get back Casey Hayes. Now, Las Vegas has a lot of money, but if I'm trying to build a better football team, I do not think it makes sense whatsoever to extend Derek Carr. You keep him on his current deal, and if he proves it again, then sure. Then you pay him a little bit more money the following year, and then you go on from there. Let's go to Anthony Morales. Offense, Robinson, Shark, Renfro, Waller, and Olave. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be a phenomenal offense. Here's the issue. I don't think that then you go ahead and you draft a receiver in the first round, right? Like, if you go ahead and pay Allen Robinson, let's say, $22 million a year, you get DJ Chark on a good deal, then you got Renfro and Waller. Like, those four receivers, I mean, you can make the argument that's one of the best receiving units in the National Football League. So then you don't go out and get Chris Olave. Then you go out and get somebody like, uh, I don't know, uh, DeMarvin Leal or Jordan Davis or somebody on the right tackle. Like, there's, there's other positions then you would go ahead and address. Let's go to George Lopez. Love your content. Jones and Carr will have unbelievable timing on deep plays next season. So I think you're talking about Zay Jones. Zay's a good receiver, but guys, I mean, we have to face it. Zay Jones is a wide receiver for on mostly every single team in the national football. Zay's a hardworking guy, and he's a free agent. And Zay's going to be a player that I could absolutely see Las Vegas bringing back. But here's the thing. If Zay is going to be in your starting lineup, I promise you this, it's not going to be a good year for Las Vegas. Now, to make sure you guys never miss anything, hit me up on IG at MitchellRent365 if you want to DM me your questions because I couldn't get to them during the live show. Remember, hit me up, slide in those DMs, and let me know what y'all are thinking. If you want to join me for my live Instagram show, it's 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific. So follow me. Hit me up on IG. Join me during my Instagram live on Sunday. I know what it says, 10 a.m. It's 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to be live on IG on Sunday right before the NFL games. I'm also going to set a reminder on, on Instagram so you guys don't miss it. All I'm saying is this. Hey, never, uh, never miss a thing. Let's go to this next one. It's coming in here from Project 1337. Let's say we keep Carr and he wins a few playoff games next year. Do we extend him? Yes. And that, that was my biggest argument why I don't think that D.C. has earned an extension. Did the Raiders make the playoffs? Yes. Was it up against a lot of tasks? Yes. But D.C. was not very good at the end of the year. Did they win games, which is important? Of course. Was it because the Raiders' offensive line of time struggled? He didn't have pieces? Yes, absolutely. But in my mindset, may, just making the playoffs, that should not like – that, like that's not good enough, in my opinion – 
to just get a contract extension, especially when one point in your career you were made the highest paid quarterback in the league, and as soon as that contract happened, the Raiders struggle because D.C. needs to have a very good team around him. He's not good enough to be able to carry an entire football team. I'm sorry, he's not. So for that reasoning, that's why I do not want them to go ahead and pay him all this money because we already did that. We saw what happened. You do that, the Raiders will not win as many football games. Let's go to Ty Davis. Realistically, I can't see Raiders affording Devontae Adams. Well, realistically, I don't know how you even think that's not possible. I mean, Raiders are top 10 in terms of cap space, and I really truly believe they're going to get money back from Damon Arnett, they're going to get money from the whole Henry Ruggs situation. So that alone is going to be an extra like $12 million. They absolutely, positively can afford Devontae Adams. And if anybody's telling you besides that, they are wrong. 